This is the plaintiff, Kimberly Kusakanki. She says the defendant, her older brother, owns her for an iPhone he grabbed from her hands and smashed against a wall, shattering the thing. This whole incident has shattered her family dynamic, and she's suing him for $2,592.94 for a new phone and emotional distress. This is the defendant, Andrew Kusakanki. He says the plaintiff threatened to call the cops on him, and three years of family frustration came out, and he grabbed her iPhone. Their whole relationship has now changed. The plaintiff is at fault for what happened, and he owes her nothing. He's accused of completely losing it. All parties, please use your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Kusakanki, you are suing your brother uh, for $2,592.94, part of that for a new iPhone that, according to you, he bashed, and uh, an additional $1,500 for emotional distress. Tell me what happened. Yes, ma'am. Um, so basically, I'm going to start, this incident happened July 11th. I'm going to start in June. Uh, me and my br other brother, our other brother, Kenneth, we were all having a discussion, and my father said, oh, the parking spot to the right will be rented out in July. Uh, so basically, there's two parking spots, the one on the left, the one on the right, and we also had the driveway. Due to, like, us having him holding the building and us having those three spots, we all got a spot. And since we are siblings, um, someone could park in the front and we could simply call them and be like, hey, can you move the car if we had to go? Due to the fact that someone was renting the other spot, now we only have one spot instead of three. So exactly. now you so went from being us. able... So, right, but here's what I don't understand. Where do you guys live? Do you guys live in that, in that building that your father owns? At that time, I was living there, uh, but then I moved out here to Long Island to my family's house. Okay. Did you, Mr. Kusakanki, live in that building? Yes, I've I've lived here for I would say at least do you live 14 with your, years. Do you live with your parents? No. They live in um, Long Island and so, I, I live here in Astoria. Oh, I was born in Astoria. This is Astoria? Oh. Oh, I have yes. I just had a little warm spot in my chest. <laughs> All right, yes, here's what uh, I'm trying to understand though. Why are you guys parking in your father's building? Do you guys live in the area? You were living in that building at the time. That's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. How many of these siblings? Because y'all are grown, right? Like, how old are you, yeah. Miss Kusakanki? Yeah. I just Ms. turned 21 Kusakanki. yesterday. Okay, and how old are you, Mr. Kusakanki? I'm 33. And how old is the other sibling we're talking about? He's 23. 23. Okay. 23. At the time when it became an issue, because you all wanted that space, what did you want it for? It's because you lived in the area or lived in the building? You say yes, Mr. Kusakanki, and you were also in the area. Was Kenneth also in the area at the time, or no? Not really. No. So not Kenneth really was, it's judge. really all between you two. That's what yes. was happening. Judge, so Your Honor, what did the dad yeah. who owns the building at that meeting, when you guys had this discussion, what did dad say it would be? So in June, he was not there this first meeting. It was me and Kenneth. And uh, so I asked him, okay. oh, whoever comes first, it is first come, first serve, correct? And my dad was like, yes, first come, first serve, because that just seems fair. So it's first come, first serve. So this is June. Does anything else happen in June before this July incident? Uh, in the beginning of July, my father had said uh, the spot was rented out. And uh, my father had told us, oh, the doctor is renting out the spot, but he will not be here because he's traveling. He will not be here till July 14th. This scenario took place on July 11th. Uh, so I actually had just arrived from Florida and I was staying in Astoria due to the fact that uh, I wanted to stay away from my parents because we had the two week quarantine period. So I stayed in Astoria. Where in the front. building are you quarantining? Who just, who's, who were you staying with? Oh, oh, my room, my room. I had that second floor for myself. Okay, got you. All right, so you park there, and then what happens? I park there at around, like, 7 to 8, and uh, I receive a call, and my dad calls me. And as I said before, the parking spot next to it was available uh, till the 14th. So my dad calls me, and he's like, oh, I need you to move the car. I was like, oh, but why? And he's like, oh, because Andy needs to park there. And I'm like, but you said that this was first come, first serve. And he just... He basically wasn't having, he was like, oh, just, uh, he just basically wanted to give in to what he wanted. 
You mean your father oh, wanted to give in to what the defendant wanted? To what the defendant wanted, correct. And you so, did not, uh, because you felt he could just park in that empty doctor's space because the doctor wasn't coming back for three more days. Is that correct? Yes. So you thought your brother was being a jerk and you didn't Basically. feel like moving the car? Correct. But the owner of the space, which is your father, had told you to move the car? Correct. Yeah, I think we got a little baggage here between you and your brother. Mm -hmm. So then what happens? So I do not move the car. Uh, I get a call around like 2 a.m. and it said, Andrew. So I didn't pick up and then I saw my dad call. So um, I pick up the phone and he just tells me to move the car. So I'm like, okay. I go out to move the car and all of a sudden I hear, I'm going to break your windows. What? Uh, and then I look and I see, and it's Thank from God. the McDonald's parking lot across the street. He's in the drive-thru. Uh, the defendant is known for road rage, so I figure, oh, maybe he's talking to the guy in front of him. He goes the wrong way down the runway and speeds right in front of my car. I think that he's going to crash into me. And in the video that I have provided, you will hear the skirt of him, like, you know, going really fast towards my car. I froze up, so I'd, I couldn't start the car at this point. So all I have to keep me safe is my car and my phone. My car, is, it's done. It's, it's not turning on. Um, Why so isn't it turning on? the remote had ran out of battery. And uh, he slams his door closed, slams on my hood, then slams on the window and he's screaming at me. He opens the door and I'm like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, I'm gonna call the cops. And uh, as I'm going to call the cops, he proceeds to grab my phone and throw it against the wall and it's broken. At this point, I was in shock uh, because... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It was just very scary for me because I just felt like I had nothing to protect me. <laughs> he was yelling at me and I just didn't know what to do. And, and I got out of the car. I was scared that he was going to hit me. And all you hear in the video is me saying, like, this is all over a parking spot. Like, don't hit me. And it, w it was just scary. And uh, I didn't know what to do, so I just stood still. Like, that's the only time... That's the only time in my life I felt like... I'm so scared that I might pee myself. I was shaking and it was just not a good situation because it's like, I don't know what else to do. I don't have a phone, my car's not working, but thank God that my aunt lives down the block. So I walk to my aunt's house and he proceeds to follow me to my aunt's house. Uh, my aunt's daughter lives on the top floor, so I'm ringing both doorbells as fast as I can so she can let me in and she finally lets me in and it just, I, I felt safe. This is at two in the morning that you're ringing both doorbells of your aunt and her daughter, your cousin? Yes. And, and, and I call my dad and I'm like, dad, like he broke my phone, this, I'm breaking down crying. And my dad just says like, you should have moved the car. And I'm like, I understand that, but that gives him no right to treat me that way. Because your honor, this has been going on for way too long that he gets whatever he wants and it's not fair. Everybody accustoms to him wow. because he has wow. anger issues. And you will, he's laughing now, but you'll see the video, your honor. You'll see the video. <laughs> Let me hear from you, Mr. Kusakanki. Let me hear okay. from you. What's your version of this? Your, yes, your honor. So this actually dates back uh, many years, actually, maybe three, four years that this has been going on. Um, she does not contribute to the family the way that she doesn't help out. So something as, as little as financially chores, or some garbage. other way. No, what, no chores. Okay, so you mean chores, helping, like out. helping okay. out? Yeah, not chores. financially. Yeah, not financially. Um, just chores around the house, helping out the family. Um, you know, my brother and I, we were raised uh, the, my, the way my father and my mother raised us was with a lot of family values. So my father's always been the type to say, anything that I'm going to give you is because you're going to earn it, not because we're just going to give it to you because that's not how life is. Uh, my father started out as a dishwasher in this country, so he knows what it is to come up in the ranks, work hard, and and you know, and get and earn. After all that hard work, earn it. What's your father do so, now? Uh, well, he owns property now, so he owns uh, multiple houses. So you know, he's a uh, he's someone I look up to. I have a lot of respect for, and uh, I you know, I really feel bad. My father that started his, off in Astoria yeah. as a dishwasher when he came from Cuba. Yeah. So go yeah. on. Yeah. So I just recently moved into the first floor and I signed a lease agreement with my father. He told me, he goes, look, 
this apartment is yours along with that parking space. He said, nobody's gonna park in that parking space but you. Are you saying that your father never told you that, hey, you know, the parking space is first come, first serve? Correct. Did Kenneth or your sister ever park in the parking spot and then you were the one who had to park behind? Uh, no, no, I mean, if it was, if it, if they did, and I think they may have a couple of times, I would call them and they would move the car. Oh, so then that was the procedure. First come, first serve, and whoever comes mm -hmm. afterwards just moves the car. So what made you mad this night to call your dad and mm -hmm. tell your dad to call her and to tell her to move the car? Why did that uh, happen because, on this night? Um, well, first of all, my sister and I, we don't get along, you know, uh, at all. And she does, she has done things to get me upset on purpose. You know, she thinks she just runs everything. And she, again, doesn't contribute to the family. Like she hasn't helped with the garbage. She hasn't helped with anything whatsoever. So I don't really have respect for somebody in our family who doesn't do anything at all. Okay. And now let's look at what happened that night. That's you getting into the car, right? And you closing the door. And that's you speeding up and screeching, burning rubber. I said don't. I told you I said take the out. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? You gotta come here and call me. Tell my dad. Oh, oh yeah, you. Oh yeah, like you. You know something? You. You don't do that. Just get your shit out of my spot. Plain and simple. I broke a ball. I told you. Pa, pa, I told you. Pa, I told you. I said, please tell us to take your shit out of my face. And why did you take it out? You had a little shit to run you. You own this building. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. All right. You gonna tell me? You gonna tell me, Pa? Really? Is that how you talk to your father? The person who came here as a dishwasher worked his way up to providing for every single stinking one of you grown children so that you guys have a place to live and a parking lot to argue about? This is your idea of family values? Your father taught you how to be a good person and your sister doesn't take out the garbage? This is you talking to your father that night? There is no excuse for your behavior, especially over a stupid parking space. And what your father needs to do, because I hope he saw these videos, is tell all of you, grow up, you're 30-something, go get your own apartment that doesn't have anything to do with problems with siblings. Because your parents do not have to live like this. They do not have to live with whatever baggage you're talking about causing you at 2 in the morning to lose it like this. You ripped the phone out of your sister's hands and threw it against the concrete wall. And then you called your father at 3 in the morning. You terrified your sister. You tell me how that Tell me what warped sense of family values that is. Tell me. That was that was completely wrong. I mean, I, I completely oh, you see think? that. In, Do yeah. you see that now? You have an anger management problem that you need to address, okay? I would feel better if since July, you had paid for her iPhone. Then I would think this is an isolated incident. You know, he lost it that night but he realizes how wrong he was. Tell me how it is that you have never offered to pay for that phone. I did offer to pay for the phone. I did offer to pay. She just didn't uh, accept my offers. I actually, my father was a mediator and he said, okay, well, how, how would you like to pay 800 to begin with? And I said, to be honest, I don't want to pay $800. You know, he goes, okay, fine. 600, 600 was the last deal. I was like, okay, fine. 600. And my father goes, okay, you know what? I can give her the rest. I was like, all right, dad, 
you know, go to her with that. All right, you know with, what? With dad that, has like to it. stop enabling you people, and I hope dad is listening to me because I have nothing but the utmost respect for dad. But dad needs to stop enabling you folks. What your father's doing is a path of least resistance. He succumbs to the guy who's angry, he, 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 which is terrible to the other kids. It's not right. He, he wakes up at 2 in the morning and just tells everybody, oh, okay, just make the peace. He turns around and tells you who ripped the... Let's see that again. Let's just take a look at that, shall we? Let's see what it is that happens with the phone at 2 in the morning. Why should your father have to pay for that? Why should your father have to pay anything for a phone that you in anger, shattered. He shouldn't pay diddly squat. You shouldn't let him pay diddly squat. Let me ask you a question. Have you and your sister spoken since July? No. How, you, how do, what do you think that's doing to your parents? No, they're very unhappy about everything that's happened and everything that's been going on uh, for the past. And this has been going on. I mean, we haven't really been on good terms for a while now. Um, due to, again, you know, I feel like she doesn't contribute. So she doesn't I've take out the garbage. Kind of like, she doesn't take out the garbage, so you smash her no, it, iPhone. Come it, on, it, man. No, you got to see was, this, and you got to see it, this for what it is. Yeah. She's suing for $1,092.94, which is what the phone cost. She's also suing for $1,500 for emotional distress. What would you like to respond to that part of her lawsuit? Well, that, uh, you know, I, I apologize for my outburst, my behavior, because that wasn't right. And I know I definitely do need to, you know, find and seek help for that, um, because it's not uh, speaking to her and speaking to my father, you know, like that is, is very just a really big sorry to to her and, and definitely to my father for, for that. All right. That was definitely on me. I am uh, ordering him to pay you back uh, the the value of the iPhone. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to also order him to pay you double the value of the iPhone. Therefore, I am finding in your favor in the amount of $2,185.88, that second amount being for emotional distress. I wish you all good luck. Um, I sincerely hope that whatever apology you just gave her was actually from your heart and that after you both go your own way, that you reach out. If you really meant it, you won't mind reaching out because your family, your parents especially, deserve better. Verdict for the plaintiff, $2,185.88. Andrew, let me ask you a question. What are you thinking about what just happened and what the judge had to say to you? How do you feel right now? I mean, you know, what she said makes sense. Um, I should have never done that. And, um, you know, definitely, uh, definitely was... Uh, this was on me, so. Your sister's here. She's, she's watching all of this. Do you want to talk to her direct? You said you haven't talked to her in a couple of months. Would you like to apologize in person? Sure, yeah. Sure. Like, Kimberly? You know, Kimberly, honestly, I'm sorry for, for reacting that way and for scaring you. Obviously, I would never lay hands on you, and I would never harm you in that way, but I can see how it came off. Obviously, it was, it was terrible. It was horrible, and I'm really sorry for, for doing that, okay? Um, I'm definitely getting help for that, uh, but I just want to say sincerely, I'm, I'm really sorry for that, um, and um, you know, I hope we can move forward from this. Kimberly, what do you do? You want to say something to your brother? I'm thankful that it's a bigger authority than just my father, because I feel like my father would just let him, you know. I had to move the car just so he wouldn't make a scene in front of the building, and I felt like if he was really sorry, he would have said that the couple months that we had before this. But I appreciate the apology. I'm always willing to forgive. Well, Andrew, she's accepting your apology. Let's see what the judges feel about this case now, because there's a lot to talk about. Wow, this was tough to watch. The videos are terrifying, and certainly uh, the plaintiff, she was genuinely hurt. And uh, the, there was nothing fake about the tears that she was shedding uh, during the case and at the end. So, God. do you think he meant it? Do you think he was just embarrassed at how it looked on television, or do you think he actually meant it? Because that was her comment. You know, I feel if he really was sorry, he would have called me in the last four months no. and paid the money. I, I think he may really be 
uh, genuine. Well, if he wasn't serious about it in the last few months, I hope he's serious about it now. Amen. So Susan says, hey, Harvey, uh, if one sister dies and never married and there is an old copy of the will, not an original, what happens to her assets and other personal belongings with only two sisters left in the family? Okay, I am not going to give you a square answer to that question because a lot is going to depend on the state, whether a state would accept a copy of a will. If they would, then the will controls. If it doesn't pass muster because you need an original, then you have what you call intestate succession. And that means in order of closeness to the person, they inherit. And if the sisters are the closest to the person who died, they will inherit equally. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.